five year old and I'm always ready to help. It's going up road right now. continue the work a geotextile it's just a piece of fabric that you put on the ground before adding the gravel so the gravel and the clay don't mix 50 millimeters of xps insulation and then we order a black plastic sheet very thick similar to the one that we ordered for the concrete slab that we did in the workshop Almost there, I can already see the ground there. But it's taking a while. It seems it's been like probably like an hour. And now I need to go and empty also all the trenches. meters 23 centimeters so 604 I do like this with no tension or anything easy and then I put the clamp like this I can apply some tension to the tape and this point is exactly where the rainwater is gonna go down from the roof and it's gonna go through the great beam and then 45 degrees and then another 45 degrees and all the way down towards some tanks that we're gonna have for rainwater eventually and then it's not really a good idea to leave rivers like that for a long time just because if you fall on top it will go through you like butter they sell these mushroom caps you just put it like this We have that trench over there that is electrical, and then that one is electrical as well, and then that one 
is electrical as well. They're big pipes just to future-proof the house. We don't really know what's gonna happen in a few years and how the solar system is gonna evolve. So I wanted to leave big pipes to be able to connect cables from the three sides of the house. This is the pipe that we're gonna be using for the electrical. It's 110 millimeters. In the outside it's corrugated and then in the inside it's actually smooth so the cables don't get stuck in the corrugation. So here is gonna be a downspout of uh, rainwater. It's gonna be inside the house, inside a wall so we won't see it. Um, what I'm doing, I'm putting it through the great beam and then taking it out at 45 degrees as soon as possible. This is the actual line that I need to follow. We need to dig another trench. I think we're gonna do it by hand. I have received a major order from Baco, which is very exciting for me because uh, quality jump on what I'm used to. I had the opportunity to order some of the tools that we use the most from them because the ones that we use were not up to up to the task anymore. You know, they were cheaper tools that they get the job done. But um, now I'm reaching to get the most quality as I can. And in order to do that, uh, you need to have proper tools. Let me know in the comments if you enjoy also seeing what tools I, I receive and what tools I'm excited about. Right, we just finished digging everything 
it's been tough work hopefully pays off in the future once we have everything laid out because we did a lot of extra work in order to make it you know um, the way we wanted it but yeah it's been tough mentally to be honest you know seeing so little progress in like pretty much two months and just seeing dirt all over the place but um, I think it's gonna be worth it and um, you know I'm gonna clean up and start with the second phase guys we just finished putting a little bit of gravel and securing the perimeter of the felt then we need to fill it a little bit more and then uh, make it perfectly level and make sure that the whole line is at the same height all right it's a lot of wind we just broke one lens so we don't want to break two lenses if this lens breaks then I don't think you're gonna see what we're doing
came back from lunch this is looking good now back to work that's pain you ready man let's go let's go These trenches over here, we're filling with sand. It's because they are trenches that are for pipes, rainwater and black water pipes. So we're gonna use um, sand this time because it's, it's better for the pipes. And then the rest are gonna be filled with the gravel. Like for example, this one also has a little bit of sand already. And uh, we need to fill it up much more. So we don't need to be thinking which one is sand and which one is gravel. So we already can see. So we are filling this with gravel, sand, and this one is gonna be filled by Aspen. <laughs> Aspen, man, you just messed up. You were filling the trench perfectly, man. Do it again. Okay. Aspen, do mate. Do mate. Me a tumba.
we were supposed to install it here but net we thought maybe we put it in front of this car that way we don't waste any space here and we can have this space empty for other things i think i'm gonna come with the excavator clean up a little bit compact the ground and then i will put felt gravel and install it but um i went for lunch and never came back and now it's too late the sun is already setting This is a nice setup. It's been like a week since we finished this um, we haven't had the chance to work on the other side and uh, this is still holding well but I need to secure it a little bit better and um, we also fill it with a lot of gravel behind the scenes just because we didn't have enough light to film but uh, today the plan is to finish that side and then cover everything with gravel at some point This is a very serious building site, as you can see. Lolita, buenas tardes.
right guys it is all ready now to start the forms i think we're gonna feel a little bit more of gravel it's not perfectly level we need to go with the laser but before i do that i need to fix the butter boards because they are slightly too low so i'm going to fix that tomorrow and then i will level up all the gravel as best as i can and probably put the the pipes just lay the pipes out and start with the forms it's been a very long journey to get to this point but um we're getting there of millimeters this way. Basically what I'm doing here is I have the laser set up there. I put the first one 20 centimeters above the butter board and then I set the receptor at that height. So it means from this point to that point where the laser is. As you can see it says, I need to go a little bit down. There you go. Now, right now we know that this point over here is at the same height and the first one that we did and in between these two since I have you know since I have this guy over here already I make sure that it's horizontal and also at the same time I am making sure that this guy is also horizontal as you can see I don't know if you can see or not I think so so right now we know that that guy is horizontal it's at the same level as this guy 
and that these two guys are at the same height than these two guys and I will need to do that over there Alright, we came this morning, I put a couple of pipes already, I put this one and also a couple of other pipes over here. These both are for rainwater, they basically come from the roof through the wall and they both go over there as you can see. We also put uh, one of the toilets, this is a small toilet area that we have over here that you access from the outside, so basically this is all open and there is a door there for a small toilet. Now we're gonna jump on installing the other, I think there are three more pipes that we need to put. I have been using this blade for the multi-tool to cut the pipes. I have been testing it this morning and works pretty well. And I'm, I'm using it in the multi-tool. And it's been quite fantastic.
I found out that um, these pipes are a bit easier to install than the ones that we have used uh, until now. It's the same concept, it's like a female with a rubber seal and then a, a male that sticks inside the rubber seal, very very watertight. But um, until now you buy one pipe in one place and one pipe in another and we didn't know that, that they have uh, like a code. This for example is 1329, so if you buy this 1329 and this guy with a different code then that's why we were having such a, a struggle sometimes to, to make it fit. If both of them are in the same code then it's much easier right now. I mean it's, it's still hard, man. Right? Isn't it? Not really. The problem is that you are really sore today and you don't have enough right, to right. <laughs> It's still hard but it's not impossible like in the in the past on some of the pipes that we used. Um, but we didn't know, we trusted you know the, the places that we bought. Um, we didn't know that for actual sewage you can only use the 1329 and that's what we're sticking with in this build. Everything that we bought is 1329 and Eugenia says it's easy. It's up to code. <laughs> it's up to code. Very important guys, this is up to code. <laughs> you see it's not really easy, but it's easier. Hey, there we go. And the, and the trick of the Vaseline also helps. Eugenia, you're sitting right in your bedroom. Are you excited? <laughs> almost there, Virginia, almost there. <laughs> <laughs> in a couple of weeks, I think we can move. <laughs> Our mother's here. <laughs> See here I made two marks here and that's 2.5 percent and I also draw this arrow so I know you know which way it goes because if not it will drive me crazy. In order to get that inclination I went ahead and I adjusted it there with a brick and a piece of wood. And now Jenny is gonna come for sand there and I will remove once everything is compacted I will remove um, the brick and the piece of wood of course.
you can see that's the mark I did and that's 2.5 I think we're gonna start building the wood forms for the foundation probably tomorrow but that's probably gonna be in the next episode just because I don't wanna make two hours long episodes and that's something that I wanted to ask you guys whether you like shorter videos and more frequent or longer videos um, with more progress because that's the plan for this new build maybe having less videos maybe once or twice a month but have like proper major progress because it's a big project if we try to, you know, make videos every week, it will be jazz. Oh, we put a couple of pipes. Let us know in the comments what you prefer. If less videos and more progress or more videos and less progress in each video. Because it has to be there or, you know, we don't have a company building for us or filming or editing. <laughs> <laughs>